The point is, ecosystems are very delicate, which is why you need to be extremely careful. And a good example of someone taking that sort of care with gene editing can be seen in a project being considered on, on Nantucket Island as a way to fight Lyme disease. You see, Lyme disease is passed from ticks to humans. But before that can happen, it goes from mice to ticks. Now, typically, the way that works is like this. A mouse goes through a tough breakup. It was a relationship the mouse didn't want to end and leaves it seriously questioning its self-worth. The mouse goes on a series of rebound dates that only deepen the disillusionment. Could anyone love me, the mouse wonders. Despondent, the mouse turns to alcohol to numb the pain. While drunk, it comes across a Tinder profile of a tick. At first, the, the mouse is disgusted, but then it's actually intrigued. Oh, God, it thinks, am I really going to fuck a tick? <laughs> The mouse goes on the date thinking it's just a date, we're just talking, but the mouse is lying to itself because as soon as the tick says, maybe we should go someplace quiet where we can talk, bam, they're banging in the shower. <laughs> and you know what? Afterwards, the mouse feels strangely satisfied. It feels desirable again. As for the tick, it can't wait to brag to its friends that it just fucked a mouse. <laughs> and they both forget all about the encounter until eight months later when the tick gets a call, bad news, you got Lyme disease. And that is how Lyme disease spreads from mice to ticks. Sometimes. Other times, the tick bites the mouse. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, the point is, to, to prevent the spread of Lyme disease, a biologist named Kevin Esbelt is considering introducing genetically edited mice that cannot pass the disease to ticks. And he would do this with a ton of caution, testing it on an uninhabited island uh, where the experiment will be contained uh, and it would only go forward on Nantucket if he got the buy-in of the local community. And even with all those safeguards, he's aware of the uncertainty. Although Kevin Esvelt is confident his engineered mice will only reduce Lyme disease and not bring harm to Nantucket's ecosystem, he also knows that absolute certainty and genetic engineering do not go together. I worry every day that I might be missing something profound about the consequences of what we're developing. Good. <laughs> I'm glad you do, because that is the kind of caution that you want from someone in his position. He clearly doesn't want to end up in a limerick that goes, there once was a man from Nantucket who gathered some mice in a bucket. He altered those mice, engineered with a splice, and now all of the seagulls are dead. <laughs> and look, there, there aren't just practical considerations to germline editing. There are huge moral questions too, particularly when it comes to humans, because it raises the possibility that gene editing could one day be used not just to fight disease, but for so-called enhancement, which sells you into some pretty dicey territory. Even Jennifer Doudna, one of the pioneers of CRISPR, sees the danger of this. Here she is telling, telling the story of a dream that she once had that was pretty on the nose. I walked into a room and a, a colleague of mine said to me, uh, Jennifer, I'd like you to explain the CRISPR technology to a friend. And he brought me into a room and uh, there, a person was uh, sitting with their back to me. And as they turned around, I realized with sort of a hor hor horror that it was, it was Hitler. And it was actually Hitler with a sort of a pig nose and it almost looked like a chimeric pig human uh, sort, of, sort of creature. It's true. She had a dream about pig Hitler wanting to learn more about CRISPR. And ethical reservations aside, she might also want to examine why her subconscious thinks that one of her colleagues is just casually friends with Hitler. <laughs> and look, look, clearly, the more control people have over the ability to design their children, the bigger the moral questions that raises, up to and including who decides what constitutes a genetic problem that needs to be fixed.